We are in script number three of the guided project on extracting NDVI time series. In the previous script, we saw how to load the MODIS collection, extract one image and visualize it. Uh, we also had to scale the image with the scaling factor to get the real NDVI values. Here, let's first take the collection, which contains all the 23 images for a year, and let's scale all the images. How do we do that? We need to map a function that can take one image and return the scaled image. And once we map that function, we'll have a scaled collection. So let's just do scaled in DBI. We'll take the modus in DBI collection and map a function. A function would take an image and return the scaled image. And to do this, we can just say return image dot multiply. Let's look at the scaled NDVI collection and see what that looks like. You can see that this contains the, the 23 images. You'll see that it has lost the system current time start and system current time end properties. We need those properties to be able to chart the image. We right now don't know on which date this image was taken. There's this ID but that's not the date. And when we do the charting, the charting function expects the images to have a date. And so what we, why this happens is because when we multiply an image, it creates a new image and that image doesn't have the same properties as the original. So we can use this helper function called dot copy properties. And that will allow us to take the source image and copy the properties. And this takes a list of properties. Let's just take the time called uh, time underscore start property and also the end property. Remember, these are all uh, composites which have both start and end times. So now if you do this and I run the code again, you'll see the images now will have both the start and end properties copied from the original image before we multiplied it. Okay, so now we have the scaled image, uh, scale and DBI. Uh, collection. Let's just take uh, this farm collections. These are all the 100 farm locations. Let's just try to chart NDVI at one of the uh, farms. So we'll just do a say test farm. We'll just call dot first, take one point out, cast it to EE dot feature. Now we are to chart. For charting, you can look at the ui.chart functions. We are trying to chart from image. And there is this function called ui.chart.image.series, which takes a collection uh, region and uh, gives you a time series chart. So let's just use that. We'll name it chart. We'll do ui. Do space, control space to autocomplete. Find that function. And we can do control space to autofill the parameters. Let's just uh, fill out the parameters as a dictionary. We'll give it a scaled in DBI collection. The region is our test farm. We'll get the geometry of that. Reducer, it doesn't matter here. This uh, is a single point, but just to be explicit, we can just do a mean. And if you had a polygon here, this would help where you can get the average NDVI value in the farm. Scale, this is a 250 meter data, so we'll use that. The X property is the system current time start. Let's just uh, leave that as it is. Okay. And now we have the chart. Let's just print and see how it looks. So now you can see the values range from zero to one and you have this nice NDVI uh, chart here. Uh, we can make this chart a little better. You can see the axes are not labeled correctly. The dates we can format it better, have a, a, a title, etc. So to change any value in the chart, you need to use this function called dot set options. And there are many, many options. This all come from the Google's charting API. You can look up the API docs for a particular chart and you'll find all the different parameters and the values and how you can set them. Uh, I generally like to, rather than looking at the charts documentation, I like to 
go into the user forum, search for the type of chart I want, maybe a bar chart or a pie chart, and just find some code example and uh, copy the parameter values from there. Just easier because the Google Earth Engine code editor supports only a subset of all the options from the chart API. So rather than you figuring out what those are, you can just find some code copy paste from there. So here I'll just show you uh, some examples of how to do this one. So I'll paste some options here. And here, uh, this uh, value sets the line width, the point size of the each point. The interpolate nulls means if there are null values, it's going to interpolate and give you a smooth curve uh, out of that. There's the title of the chart as well as the axis and the format of the numbers there. So now when you run this, you will see the chart will look much prettier and you have the right uh, labels of the axis axis and uh, the chart here. You click the pop out button here and uh, this chart is good to go. You can download the PNG or you can download the CSV values and you can use your favorite charting program to create the chart there. So this is for one point, but we need this time series for 100 points. There is actually a function here called UI chart image series by region. You could do, do that. You can, it takes a collection and a feature collection and it's gonna give you a chart for every point. And you can imagine when you run this, you will get a chart with 100 different uh, lines like this and it can get quite messy if it finishes because that's a lot of data processing and most times you will see that it's, uh, it's timing out. And uh, when something times out in Earth Engine, you know it's time to export the data. So how do you export a chart like that? You can't, you can't export charts like that. You need to export the underlying data. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna export, extract those data and export that as a CSV file. So that's coming up next in the next script.